Well, in response to a question that was asked about my videos on YouTube, I have four bikes. This is my Kawasaki 1000. It's a 1977. It has 25,000 miles on it. So I'll try not to take too long here. It's pretty warm out today. It's over 60 degrees. on kick stand it up nobody coming yeah these big thousands they can really go they gotta really be careful not to go too fast in town I got the face shield open right now, probably pretty chattery. I guess I'll go ahead and close it up if it ain't too hot. Should be able to hear me talking real good now. Yeah, I just put the battery in it today. Had it on one amp charger for about a whole day it didn't seem to bring it up any then I put it on a three amp charger and left it on overnight and it said it was overcharged <laughs> hopefully I didn't ruin the dang thing it seems to be working all right yeah it's got pretty warm riding around in town with that face shield closed gotta stop here a little bit of traffic out today my leg is a little bit sore from making a long ride the other day. I usually don't like to ride any more than about 50 or 60 miles because my leg has a tendency to get cramps in it. Rode all the way up to Sioux Falls and back the other day and it didn't do my leg any good. It's starting to get better again. pretty breezy out here if I didn't have this face shield down it would probably chatter like a son of a gun almost as bad as a Tony Hawk that wind causes a lot of chattery noise that's why you mount it on the outside of the helmet once you get going down the road you can't hear nothing but that chattery popping noise having it inside the helmet and then close the face shield isolates all that bullshit noise had a lot of trouble with this Kawasaki over the years. The carburetors used to go to hell on it all the time. And I took it to several different motorcycle shops, including Kawasaki dealers. They always charged me about $300 each time I took it in. And it never really worked a heck of a lot better than when I took it in. So I never drove it much. That's why it's only got 25,000 miles on it, even though it's, it's over 30 years old. Last time, about three years ago, a guy suggested I take it up to a private mechanic that lives in a small town north of here that works on Kawasaki's almost exclusively. And they said he's real good with carburetors. So I thought, well, what the heck, nobody else been able to make it work. So I just said, well, I'll take it up to him. And then he couldn't work on it right away. He had it for the whole dang summer. Come to find out the carburetor was the only problem it had. It had an ignition problem also. It was really only running on two cylinders. No, <laughs> no wonder it didn't really seem to work worth a damn. Anyway, ended up getting that fixed. Carburetors had a, a problem with the pilots. Ended up getting that fixed. He got charged me over $300 also. But at least 
when I got it back after he got done working on it, it runs better now than when it was new. It definitely runs nice. I can start it up and have the choke on for a couple of blocks and take the choke clear off even if it's real cold out. It just keeps right on running. Before, the way it was, if you took and stopped any way at all, you'd have to put the choke back on to start it or you had to leave the choke out about half on all the time in order to get it to run halfway decent. I took it in when it was new and told them them carburetors weren't right. And they just told me that it needed to be broke in. Well, after 20,000 miles, I would think it would be broke in. <laughs> it's still screwing up. These last, it had about 21,000 when I took it up to that guy. So in the last couple years, I put about 4,000 miles on it. And I had like, it just runs like a clock. I did have to do some playing around with a pet cock. I put a new pet cock on there. Cost me $100 for a doggone petcock. Anyway, the brand new petcock, when I was bringing it home, it leaked like hell. So I called the, that guy up that I took it to and told him that the petcock leaked. And he said, well, you gotta tighten it up a little bit, but don't overdo it, because it'll smash that washer inside of there. Then you'll have to take it apart and get a new washer for it. So anyway, I tried tightening it up. It didn't seem to matter how tight I tightened it. It just leaked like hell. So I took the tank off and took it up to him and had him look at it. He took it apart and said, yeah, that washer in there was shot. So I asked if he had a new one. He said, no. <laughs> and I had to drive all the way up to Jackson, Minnesota to get a, a new washer for it. 40 cent washer, drive 100 miles to get a 40 cent washer. Brought that back home, put that in there, and tightened it up just finger tight like he told me to do. Still leak like hell. So I kept tightening it up with the wrench until it quit leaking. Then it wouldn't run worth a damn. So I called him up and asked him what the heck the deal was. You know, I said I got that washer in there and all I got it so it don't leak. Now it don't wanna, it don't wanna run. So he said, well, I'll check to see if there's any fuel coming out of the petcock. So I turned the petcock on and the fuel would just barely come out of there. And he said, well, you probably got that washer tightened up so bad that it's smashing over top of the outflow hole take it apart put a different washer in there again I thought, oh shoot I ain't gonna do that I just got it so it don't leak now so I took the petcock completely off the bike and looked down in there with a flashlight I seen that part of that rubber washer was blocking the holes took a small drill and drilled them holes out and then blew it all out real good with an air